I don't have a lathe in my shop, so whenever I need to make something round, I've had to resort to putting it in my drill and holding it up against my belt sander to make it round and add some shape to it. You've seen me do this several times before in my other videos. The problem is, if I needed to create a bunch of pieces that are all identical, there is absolutely no way I could create them consistently using this method. I need to come up with some way where I can make multiple round pieces that are all exactly the same. And since there's nothing more consistent than a robot, I figured I would design a lathe for my CNC. Nothing super fancy, just something that can hold a piece of stock and to rotate it while the CNC works its way down the side. Well, this project should be interesting. Let's see if I lose any fingers. After designing the whole thing in Fusion 360, I could head downstairs to my shop. And since this project is going to be a jig for the CNC, I figured I'd just have the CNC cut all the pieces out for me. But first, I needed to cut down a piece of 3 quarter inch plywood that would be big enough for the job. I trimmed it to length over at the miter saw, and then I could plop it down and get it clamped securely on the CNC. Now, I don't know if you've used a CNC before, but they can be a lot of fun. Admittedly, I was pretty apprehensive at getting one of these machines in my shop because I just kept having visions of it routing my face off or attaching a Skynet over the Wi-Fi. But years later, I don't know what I'd do without it, to be honest. Sure, there was a learning curve at first, but once I got over that hurdle, it's just another tool in the shop. And what helped me conquer the challenge of learning how to operate this thing is understanding that it behaves exactly the opposite of a typical teenage adolescent. In other words, it does exactly what you tell it to do. So if it starts to do something fishy, then you better go look at your toolpaths again because it's doing exactly what you told it to do. After a short while, the CNC had all the holes drilled, the pockets created, and all the pieces cut out. At this point, I could take the project board off the machine and bring it over to my workbench so that I could cut all the tabs and pop the pieces out. Then over at the belt sander, I could sand the remnants of the tabs off and flush everything up. Then I got my bearings and I installed some bearings in the headstock and the tailstock faceplates. After that, I could start to put things together. And it was really pretty easy. Because of how I designed it, things went together like Legos. I just added a few drops of glue here and there and then I pressed them into place. Granted, some pieces needed some taparoos from the Mallet of Persuasion, but everything fit really nicely in the end. The main bed of the lathe has a channel for T-Track to be added so that you can adjust the headstock to accommodate longer pieces of stock. I just pounded it into place and then used a scrap piece of wood to make sure it was seated all the way down. Now that the track is in, I can use a johnny bolt to fit through the headstock assembly and to slide it into the track. But now we need to make a knob for it so that it can be held into place. And in true Fisher's shop fashion, I'll make it out of black walnut. Why? Well, because it's completely unnecessary. I start by drawing a circle, and then, without changing the compass's setting, I use it around the perimeter to map out six drill points. And once I had them all marked, I poked a little hole at each spot so that I could easily find each one over at the drill press. And then I drilled a quarter inch center hole for the bolt to pass through. And next, I can take it over to the bandsaw and I can cut the knob out. I used the spindle sander to ease over the sharp edges, and then I wanted to give the safety police something to freak out over, so I decided to include this clip of me adding a round over to each side over at the router table. And now it's time to inset the nut into the knob. The first thing I do is I trace the outside so I know where to begin chiseling. And then I just go crazy, and I work my way down, chopping the sides and mortising out the bottom until I can fit the nut down into place. I trim the johnny bolt down to size, and then I can try out the headstock. 
Nice. The tailstock will have a live center. So to make that, I simply chucked up a bolt into the drill press and I held a metal file on angle against the tip until eventually it was sharpened to a point. It didn't take too long before I had it perfectly sharp and then I could install it into the tailstock assembly. Now, to make the spur drive center for the headstock, I figured I could use my angle grinder and cut a cross into the tip of the bolt. Then I just sharpened each one of the four tips that were left to give me a decent little spur. It's not perfect, but it might just do the trick. I'm worried that it might strip out the wood though. Time will tell. So after I got that installed into the headstock, I was ready for my first test. I prepared a little 10 inch piece of pine, I marked the centers, and I got it installed into the lathe. Then to turn the headstock, I figured I would use a socket and a right angle attachment for my drill. At this point, I didn't know how fast the stock should be spinning, but I did know that it needed to be going pretty slow. And after hooking up the first drill, I realized that I had a problem. All right, this drill does not have any speed settings. It's only one speed. But this one here has got two. So this is the fast one, and then this is the slow one. So I think that one might do better because I think we need to get this thing going just about as slow as possible. Okay, let's try that. That's much better. That's perfect. Now with that figured out, I mounted the lathe on the CNC and I discovered another problem. Yep, that's not gonna work. That's a problem. Okay, so I can't get the bit close enough to engage the stock without the bottom of the Z slider here hitting the uh, tailstock frame. So I'm going to have to trim my tailstock down lower than the Z slider, um, and then I can have it come up here to support the bearing, and then probably back down again. Well, it's only cutting on the back side, so I probably only have to trim this one. Uh, but chances are, if I do it here on the tailstock, I'm going to have to do it again on the headstock. Uh, so, let's get that taken care of. I used my back saw to notch out a section on both the tailstock and the headstock to make room for the CNC. And once I was done, I put it back on the machine and I verified that we have the clearance that we need. A small squeeze clamp was perfect for applying just the right amount of pressure on the drill trigger to get things spinning slowly. And then I ran my first test, until I had to stop it because I nearly wet my pants. Okay, that went horribly bad. And I'm pretty sure it's because this is a down cut bit and it was grabbing the, the stock and actually throwing it down. Um, maybe if I try a different bit. So I tried an upcut bit and that totally fixed the issue. I just gotta slow down the CNC speed so I can get rid of those lines. Another thing that needs addressing was the wobble in the right angle drill attachment. I made a small cradle for it to sit in to support it and I glued that in place. Then for my next test, I went back into easel and I tried to draw a more curvy line, but I was having trouble because computers hate me. It wouldn't let me draw the lines at the angles I wanted, so when I was done, it wasn't as smooth as I would like it to be. Instead, you could really tell that it was just a whole bunch of little straight lines put together. But it was the best I could do with that program, so I figured I'd try it anyway. I zeroed the CNC against the highest point of the stock, and then I kicked off the job. It really seems to be working much better. However, since the lathe is so tall, I had to bypass the security height of the CNC so that it would stop complaining. There simply wasn't enough room for the Z axis to go any higher. But aside from that, it seems to be working quite well. Once the job completed, 
I popped it out of the lathe and was real happy with how well it turned out. I just gotta make the lathe a little lower. So, back to Fusion 360, where I could take the previous design and tweak it a bit to give it a much smaller profile. I ended up taking off a bunch of the height, but I still gave it the ability to turn up to a one and a half inch piece of stock while also having the clearance for the Z slider that the CNC wants. After cutting that out and putting it together, I figured I'd draw my curvy lines in a different program that really let me get them just the way I wanted. And before I run my next test, I wanted to address some wobble that I was getting in the right angle attachment. I wasn't sure if it was having any negative effects, but I figured that I could easily eliminate it just in case by screwing on a little piece to hold it down. And after all, this gave me a chance to put in some flathead screws, because let's face it, if I didn't, I'd never hear the end of it from you guys. There we go. Okay, checking clearance. I can pass completely over the tailstock and more than halfway over the headstock. That's plenty. We should be good now. All right, let's zero the machine and run another test. That turned out really good. I love how smooth the curve turned out to be. It's exactly like what I had drawn. The only thing I noticed was that the spur drive center was sometimes skipping and stripping out like I was afraid it would. So I figured I could make a better one. And I think I can do it by using a wing nut that I found in my neighbor's car engine. I'll sharpen the bolt itself like I did for the live center, and then I'll sharpen each of the wings on the nut. This will make it way easier to center on the stock. Plus, it'll give it two points that are further out to really grip the wood. In the end, I ended up with this mean looking thing. I made another decorative curvy line in Inkscape again, and then I switched over to Easel. I configured my stock to be exactly one half the thickness and one half the height of what it actually is, because whatever I carve on one half will get replicated since it's turning on the lathe. I imported my curvy line as an SVG and I positioned it over my stock. I had to stretch it to fit the length of the piece, but it still got the shape that I'm going for. And I can sort of preview how it's going to look, but I have to envision it being round. Next, I adjust the speeds and the feeds so that it moves real slow, like 3 inches a minute. And lastly, I export the G-code. I send it over to my CNC, and I head back to the shop. Once there, I grabbed a nice piece of black walnut, and I got it all loaded up and secured into the lathe. I positioned the tip of the bit so that it was just barely touching the highest edge of the stock and then I zeroed the CNC. Next, I used a squeeze clamp to get the drill spinning so that it was turning at the pace of around 60 to 70 revolutions a minute. That's just a little faster than one rotation per second. And then I kicked off the job. Now my depth per pass is really shallow. It's only cutting like a 32nd of an inch each time. And with the CNC only moving at 3 inches a minute, this can be a lengthy process. All in all, this little spindle took me like 40 minutes to cut. Now I could play around with the speeds and the feeds a bit to see if I can make it quicker, but I'm hesitant because the results I'm getting now are really good. I gave it a little sanding when it was done, and then I put on a coat of oil just to see what it would look like with some finish on. Man, it looks good. Okay, well, now I can pop it out of the lathe and add it to my collection of the other test subjects. It's kind of neat to see how each test got better than the previous. This first one, I was using the wrong bit and had the revolutions too slow and the CNC too fast. The next one, I had the right bit, but the speeds were still off. Then I got the speeds figured out, but the program I was using didn't give me a smooth curve. And for the fourth test, I had it figured out. I just needed to make a new spur drive to hold the workpiece better. And then the last test. This one turned out fantastic. I am super happy with how this came out looking. So what do you think? It's cool, right? It's even cooler than that time when the Klingons were competing against the Ewoks in the great Quidditch match of Morador in that Battlestar Galactica movie. 
But what I really like is that now I can make small round pieces for my other woodworking projects. And if there's a need to make multiple pieces that are exactly identical, this CNC lathe will let me do exactly that. Now, if you have a CNC and want to try out making this lathe for your machine, I'll have plans available on my website over at fishersshoponline.com. The plans will have the G-code for the lathe, a materials list for all the hardware you'll need, and step-by-step -step instructions on how to put it all together and what settings to use for your CNC. Hey, thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to give it a like and to leave me a comment down below. And with that, take care, and I'll see you next time. Z-axis is greater than the how? How is that possible? Because I zeroed it on top of the stock. What is the problem? What are you complaining about? Oh, helps if you don't put it in upside down. Oh. Do I even know how to put these? Oh my gosh! Oh crap! Okay, don't, don't fit. I bumped it. I made this too wide. I don't, I'm beyond the work area of the machine. I'm gonna have to. Nuts. I'm gonna have to re engineer this.